are you doing? Well, anybody with half a brain can tell I'm gonna jack it up and put a cam in it. Everybody knows a two-stroke ain't got a cam in it. It kind of does. Well, you got some splaining to do. Let's go in the shop and I'll explain it to you. Yeah, hello, everybody. I want to talk to you about what you always hear about port and chainsaws. Now, I want to give you a different way to think about it, though. Um, that's what really turned the light on for me. My background, mechanic-wise, it's been a long time since I was a professional mechanic, but my background uh, was in gas turbine engines, jet engines, if you will, uh, and regular four-stroke engines. I worked on semis for a long time, worked on new cars for a spell, uh, and a belt pulling tractor. I, I used to run a pulling tractor, uh, and I helped uh, local circuit track guys. I had a machine shop. Uh, you know, I could stroke cranks and do different things, right? It took me a while to wrap my head around two-stroke timing uh, just because I didn't quite understand what all was going on inside this engine. I was trying to I was trying to uh, compare everything to a four-stroke and you still can. You still can and that's what I'm going to do. Uh, like the goofy intro, put a cam in it. Well, essentially that's what you're doing when you when you pour the chainsaw. Now Everybody wants to know everybody's timing numbers, and I and I get that uh, because that's a good place to start, and it is something this uh, definite. You can measure that. Um, you can measure the other numbers too, but you guys are aware uh, with a four-stroke background, if you go get a cam, it's lift and duration. Lift and duration are two things that you'll see if you're if you're looking at cam work in a four-stroke. Uh, of course, the lift is how much it lifts the valve, and the duration is how long the valve's open in degrees of the crankshaft. Uh, even like a circle track where you're running quite a few more RPMs than you are on your 454 Chevy that you're wanting to pull a horse trailer down the road with, uh, you're going to have a lot lift, di different lift and duration. Depends on where you want your power range at. Same thing with a chainsaw. A lot of you guys already understand it, uh, it just, but for people like me, this this was what helped. The duration, if it was four stroke, how long your intake valves open, you get a different cam ground with maybe a longer duration, your duration affects where your RPM range is gonna be. Uh, or where it's going to produce power the best at your duration does and you got lift on a chainsaw too uh, you have lift on a uh, cam that's how far it's going to lift that valve so your 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 pistons going to act like a valve and your duration is going to be when this pistons going up it's pulling a vacuum behind it down here in this small chamber and when it goes up and it cracks that open, it's gonna start filling that void down there and the farther it goes up, it's pulling a vacuum behind it. And between the, when that goes up and when it comes back down, that is your duration. We can change that duration and that's, uh, the same thing happens on the exhaust side, only on the top side of the, the top side of the piston, of course. You can change that duration on this intake side with a grinder, you can grind this lower level of that down let's say it was 160 degrees of rotation and you back this up five degrees to where it opens sooner well it's going to go up and close down and close late later so five degrees on each end would add up 10 degrees that's going to change your duration that everybody knows that everybody uh that's what everybody wants everybody else's numbers hey i got this good saw Man, that guy saw it really runs. What's your timing numbers? Well, they want to know what he's running for exhaust, what he's running for intake, and which is duration. You can get this guy's timing number or this gal's timing number. They might tell it to you exactly. They're not hiding nothing. They're telling you exactly what their timing numbers are. And they're telling you duration, but they're not telling you the lift. The lift and valve shape, like a three-angle valve job on a car or different heads flow better than others because of runner shape inside the head 
that's also what you're dealing with here as well so I'd like you to consider that lift is this area from this side to this side here to here or or in general the whole area and that that's hard to measure for people or to tell somebody in degrees they tell you we have uh, 160 degrees of intake timing duration well you know that's 80 before and 80 after top dead center that just means this skirt clears this intake side when I'm joking about putting a cam in it I think it's handy to think about as in hell my I think it's uh, for guys like me that turn the light on of putting a cam in it uh, it got me to thinking about knowing on a four stroke if I need to raise my RPM I might know that for a certain RPM for a circle track I may want 210 uh, duration and five whatever lift for a certain size engine well same thing with chainsaws you, you need to think of lift and duration in my opinion consider like a drag car you hear them coming up to the line they won't even hardly idle they're sitting there shaking like a dog pooping peach seeds just just can't hardly run but boy when them things get up to the rpms uh, man they smooth right out and they run because among other things their lift and duration is is for that rpm they used to have an old 72 O's Omega had a pretty good sized cam in it and oh, that thing at the stoplight it just slobber and do bad and I had to run a 3500 RPM stall converter in it uh, just because it didn't have any lower end torque didn't have wouldn't hardly leave a stop sign uh, without revving it up you know you had to get it up out of that RPM range and smooth it out same way with the chainsaw makes them hard to start won't idle uh, sure you can move your RPMs up but now you, now you sacrifice runnability on the lower end I'm not telling you numbers I'm just wanting to give you some thoughts of how one thing affects another everything's cause and effect and you can see there's some lines in there uh, and I drew them on you could see the different wear pattern and what that wear patterns from is the edge of those piston skirts right here and right here so all the air that gets to come in the bottom out of the bottom of your crankcase gets to run up there now you can widen these out to that line you can see the wear pattern there's nothing to prohibit you from widening that out uh, and and a lot of times that'll help runnability of a saw I personally like a bigger uh, lower transfer down here I like getting that metal out of the way I like getting this metal out of the way uh, kind of like a runner sucking air through a straw or sucking air through his mouth wide open which is which can be a good thing uh, or a bad thing you can get too much air everything's cause and effect oh that's like three stooges running down the hall and they're all trying to get through the same door <laughs> they all get clogged up in there so you don't get as much air up on top the stooges are all clamored up down here conversely it's like when the door is just big enough and all three of them stooges run in there well they all fit they all fit just fine and man they run in there and they hit up in here and they hit the back of that wall and the door slammed after them and they're caught that's kind of what we're doing here uh, we're worried about the speed of that air a little bit and that's where your uh, that's where your lift not so much the duration but that's where your lift comes into play and that's why people's saws run so much different than anybody else even if they have the same timing numbers which is just your duration your lift plays such a factor in this I'm not going to pretend to know what the best lift is for any saw I'm a hack guys I am a hack that loves learning and loves understanding and if I understand something a little bit different because my mind works kind of goofy to a lot of people's maybe it's because I'm left-handed maybe it's because I grew up without TV and my mind just had turned stirred all the time I don't know regardless if I can help you guys back to the three stooges in this barn door uh, most of you know 
and I and I got a couple people that's, that watch this channel because they like some of the other stuff I do that are also intrigued by porting so bear with me and you guys that know all there is to know about porting uh, go ahead and keep watching because I think uh, maybe it'll help you explain it to somebody else that's like me that the light doesn't come on very bright very often you'll notice on a cam on a camshaft the lift or the duration numbers are 200 200 plus and and if you look at it you'll have you can have an intake valve open and an exhaust valve open or you you could be making compression your piston can be coming up to make compression but your valves ain't shut yet by just a couple of degrees and that's the, the and that is they're predicting how fast that air is going to be coming in there just like three stooges running into a closet or like whenever i load sheep man they can be a booger to load but it seems like when that first one goes into that trailer the whole rest of the herd will fly through there and you can overload a trailer easy because they're all going in there so fast and if you shut the door you got more in there than you want you got more than you can haul comfortably the same way with uh same with your air molecules fuel and air mixture consider these lower transfers as uh, the barn door or the three stages running down the hallway okay this this thing's running so fast up and down and it's you know 13,000 times a minute let's say and it's coming down when it comes when this piston comes down it forces that air up that transfer and as soon as it as soon as the top of the piston breaks that that air goes rushing in there okay simultaneously uh we've just burnt uh well yeah when we're coming down it forces the air up into here and up on top of the piston simultaneous to that coming down on top of the piston we just fired so it's, it's what's pushing that down and as soon as as soon as that piston opens up the exhaust the exhaust is running out and just a couple a couple degrees later see that piston's not that piston will be right in there it's not even opened all the way it's still going down and it's already opened up on top <clears throat> For the intake charge to come in so basically that intake charge is chasing that exhaust out uh, now if you get that going fast enough and and that's where your that's where your timing and your duration can come in if you slow that down too much by making too big down here too much lift uh, you'll slow your air down and it just lazily goes into that cylinder and it doesn't chase that exhaust out that exhaust chases that all the way out not only is it run it to the door it's like a daggum dog not only is he run the burglar out but he's on his tail all the way out the door okay well dog catcher comes around the corner which is your exhaust so that dog turns around he bounces back and runs back in the door just as that door shuts okay well what that does for you if you can get if you can get air coming from both ways at the same time let me back up just a second if it's too slow you have you can still have a vacuum on top of this piston when it's starting when it's when it's closed and starting to make compression and by vacuum I don't mean a big vacuum I mean less than 1.0000 atmospheres which would be considered a vacuum if you only have 0.98 atmospheres well you're losing compression because instead of making compression from if if your cylinder set at 99 degrees and it's got to come up to 98 before it's before you're at 1.00 compression or 1.00 atmosphere then you just lowered your dynamic compression because you didn't get a full charge in here conversely if that air is running in there so fast about like sheep or three stooges or dogs or coming back in the door 
if you got such a charge of air coming in here and the bounce back of air and fuel coming back into here when that door shuts it may be like when all the sheep run in the horse trailer at once there's too many in there you could be at 1.05 atmosphere just as soon as that closes well that's going to give you more compression the lift is going to more affect your dynamic compression so i want you to think about that like a cam and if you can raise your dynamic compression and i'm not against raising static compression by milling or doing machine work I'm not against it a bit uh, i want you to just think about your engine timing like a camshaft and if you can get everything just right not only will you have raised your static compression which is what you'll see on the gauge when you're pulling it over or how hard it is to turn this all over you can also raise your dynamic compression and and uh, the dynamic compression is pretty pretty well free I just got to play I just got to keep opening it up till I went too far and that's why I work on that's why I'm working with an aftermarket cylinder this is all here run good uh, with a stock cylinder but I don't want to go grinding on a stock cylinder I'll go grinding on one of these and there's a lot we're going to do in there and stick around and we'll do that and we're going to see what we can do but I, I wanted to give you an idea think about it like a camshaft put a cam in her 